Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm guessing it's mainly gentlemen, welcome to the Reddit Dota 2 League. And today, we have hot singles in your area playing up against UK is good at Dota. So I'm guessing both of these li titles are lies, but anyway, I'm gonna get into this uh, game. I was requested by Toontainment to cast this one, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I am Zambrella, and uh, let me know what you think. I'll uh, see you guys in a little bit. Uh, I mean, you can, oh, I don't even know what I'm talking about, man. Anyway, I'll, uh, if you do enjoy it, please give me a follow, whatever. I'd really appreciate it. Any comments, I'll be looking in the chat. But anyway, straight into this draft, we see that uh, the dire side, dire side will be uh, UK as good at Dota. They ban out the Alchemist and Doom, pretty standard stuff. However, hot singles in your mum, in your area. Hot singles in your mum? Hot singles in your area. Oh my god, I hope the whole cast isn't like this. They'll, uh, they uh, ban out the techies, interestingly, and also the darks here, less, un less interestingly. And we've already got the two picks, so we can go straight into those. The Slada and the Queen of Pain for the Dire, and Tusk Ember Spirit for the Radiant. Um, there's not really any notable exceptions. These are pretty standard picks. Uh, no surprises there. Uh, I think the Slada, Queen of Pain, they can kind of inter... But they're kind of... You know, Queen of Pain could be safe, can be played safe lane, can be played mid, can also be played in the off lane. Slada are predominantly played in the off lane at the moment. His vision very handy, and Tusk, though, picked up. He's great at saving heroes. Good uh, trapping people in. Walrus Punch, very potent as well. Goes through BKB. It's not really a surprise that we see him here. And Ember Spirit as well, man. He's He's got it all. If he gets off to a good start, he can really snowball, but even if he doesn't, maybe he's he's good enough. Yeah, he can. his late game is, is really good, so if you can keep him nice and uh, farmed up throughout the mid game... Keep him, keep him going, even if he's not snowballing. But still, wow. While I've been talking about this, we've uh, got into the th the second set of bands, the Wind Ranger and the <coughs> Wind Ranger and the, the Winter Wyvern and the PL and the Juggernaut have been banned out. Oh, my brain is working slow today. So yeah, um, so moving on, I think this is, you know, pretty standard stuff. You see, I'm surprised to see the Wind Ranger banned out by the Dire. I guess they already have their mid Queen of Pain though, because Wind Ranger obviously would be pretty good with the Slada with the amp damage. However, Bane Batrider is the combo for the Dire side. Batrider hero that has slowly be been making more of a scene in the pro in the pro games, but I haven't actually cast a game of Batrider for quite a while, I don't think. But Bane. Pretty, uh, very strong support heroes, as you'll keep hearing me say. Plenty of stats. Uh, he's got decent right click as well, you know, high hit points, that sort of stuff. And the Fiend Grip, go through BKB. Good way of catching out the Ember Spirit if he's not too careful. Someone might have to buy a Lincoln Sphere. That might, someone might be the Ember Spirit, which puts a dent into his damage output. Um, Dazzle, picked up for hot, hot singles in your area. Um, their support hero. This could be an offlane tusk or a uh, four position tusk. We we don't know yet, but the minus armor, the weave, really combos well with the Ember Spirit. Also, a way of countering at the Slada with his amp damage. The vision, pretty good as well, actually, if you think about it against the Bat Rider and the Grave. So, obviously, a really good save. Uh, Ember Spirit is actually pretty good against the Queen of Pain as well. Searing Chains means Queen of Pain can't blink for three seconds when Searing Chains is at the max second max lockdown. Spirit and Spirit Breaker, after some deliberation, is going to be the choice for the Dire, so the Radiant side even. Um, like I said before, Spirit Breaker or the Tusk could be either the position for or the off lane. So I'll leave that up to you guys. Leave that up to the Radiant to decide what they want to do with it. So Shadow Fiend is the last ban. Not actually, yeah, that's the that's the one pick and ban I was uh, I've been thinking something's missing, and it's, yeah, so Shadow Fiend is finally banned out though from the dire side as hot singles in the area probably looking for that mid lane heroes Ember Spirit really not put there anymore. Whereas the dire they'll be looking for this 
Uh, I don't know, is this going to be a safe lane slaughter or support slaughter or maybe a support queen of pain? The matter is just so interchangeable at the moment. This is why we get exciting games like that. So it's going to be a gyrocopter. This means it's probably, it could be a support bat rider. But I'm guessing it's going to be a support slaughter. Most likely you have the bane set up with the nightmare. So that makes him okay in that response, in that respect. So we've got the carry gyro. He's got the AoE, much like the Ember Spirit has, can farm up equally as well. Or at least uh, keep toe to toe with him anyway. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> so, final pick now for hot singles in your area. I haven't really had a chance to analyze what they could. So, like, analyze. They've got mid heroes, other strong mid heroes uh, at the moment. There's still plenty of plenty to choose from, that's for sure. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Spectre. And the Spectre is gonna be picked up. I was not expecting this. This is some serious late game coming out from the Radiant side. Uh, I mean Spectre is surprisingly strong earlier on, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, I know a couple of people playing in uh, each of these teams. Toon Tame, I'm a man, and Zeriel, so I'm going to shout out for you guys. Oh, Danny D, I should say, I think he's known as. Both top level players, so, and also, I must say, this game is pretty hyped up. I don't think, looking at the leaderboards just now, the way I see it, I don't think Toon Tamer's team, hot singles in your area, they haven't lost a game. Four wins, zero losses. This is the third week now. And Zero's team, they're three and one, so they've only dropped the one game. I'm sure both teams will be looking to get really far in, and as I have the most horrible visual bug... Oh, it's gone away. Thank God, it was not sticking around. Okay, thank uh, the Queen of Pain has crashed, but this will give us a time to deal with... Uh, Team is having to deal with some teams. Apparently, there's probably some issues. I believe he is an admin at the moment in this uh, in this game. Anyway, on the radiant side, that is hot singles in your area. We got Toon Tamer playing the Spear Breaker, Whale on the Dazzle, Moomin playing the Tusk, Nowhere playing the Spectre, and finally Forgotten Fury on the Ember Spirit. On the dire side, that is UK is good at Dota. We've got low res playing the gyrocopter. Kaima, or Kaima, I'm going to call him Kaima on the Slada. Arizona on the Queen of Pain. Zeriel on the Batrider. And Jose, or Joe's, I'm going to call him Jose on the Bane. This Toon Tamer is clearly having to deal with some people. But yeah, please uh, share this if you're enjoying the cast. Whatever. We uh, really appreciate it. But what will uh, teams do off the bat? Will any of them go aggressive five-man smoke up? We shall have to wait and see. Uh, also for the next game, I'm going to have a co-caster. Unfortunately, the game started before I could bring him in at very late la last notice, so that's kind of my bad. Uh, that will be good old, uh, good old Bateman, Dan Bateman. The second game, this is a best of two, if you guys were wondering, if you don't know already. I'm just waiting for some things to be sorted out, but let's have a think about their draft. So, I mean, the late game is basically the Radiance. Like, if they can go to 40, 50 minutes, Spectre and Ember Spirit is just going to absolutely wreck. However, Spirit Break, I think they have like their early mid-game kind of secured. Ember Spirit can do very well. I mean, he's got the Magic Shield, the Flame Guard, the Searing Chains. It's all pretty good magic damage until he gets the physical damage with Battle Fury and a Daedalus. And don't forget Spirit Breaker, he can roam around. Tusk as well, and Dazzle great throughout the game with the grave, the Shadow Graves, the Shadow Waves, and the Weave. Very potent on the dire side, though. Batrider, he can pick someone out if the Ember Spirit doesn't get a... Uh, you know, Lotus Orb put on him, or Lincoln Sphere or something. They could blow him up very quickly, lock him down with the Fiend's Grip. Gyrocopter will get some last 
serious right clicks in. I mean, Queen of Pain can even build into right clicks as well. She might get a hex later on into that game. Slaughter as well, if he has a good start. You can get things like an AC, get super minus armor with the amp damage. It's really worth uh, thinking about. Wait in for game to get started. I mean, in the chat, my peeps, checking it out. Can uh, who do you think is going to win this? Who based on draft alone? In fact, based on draft and also maybe based on uh, if you know the teams. If we will be getting going soon. Do, do, do. <sighs> Still waiting. Still waiting. Let's play some Dota. Yeah, we're gonna get going. We're gonna have some Dota. We get into this game, Spectre. That should fight. Can it go for a magic stick? If you think he's up against a Batrider, this is a smart move. Smart move indeed, but straight away Batrider TPs to the bottom lane. What is this set? Ah, uh, ah, uh, Slaughter. Yeah, it's set. It's kind of badass. All right, that was only a very quick disconnect. Back into this game, folks, so don't worry. I'm gonna see Batrider get a very quick Observer Ward down to try and block this pool camp on the Radiant side. Where is he gonna put it though? Is he gonna put it in this little spot over here? I think this one does block it actually. Something silly like this box here, approximately. And if you put the, actually the good one is here because normally you put like a sentry down here and it sees here, and a sentry here, we'll see any of the ones around here. But this one here, it doesn't, when you put them in the usual place, doesn't get spotted out by those sentries. Anyway, because he went down there, he TP'd there early. He might not know. He put down a, well, they won't know that he put down a sentry or not. We've got three radiant, four radiant heroes here. They're going to go, uh, was this top lane where a Spectre on his own got the Spectral Dagger at ready if need be to try and contest the uh, Outrider. As we do have some BM coming out from both sides. Pretty standard stuff. Now, now, gentlemen. Slada. He's going to move forward himself, but he's got the backup of three other heroes. We could have a clash on both sides of the rune. Spirit Breaker moving forward. He's got that charge ready. Or could have the charge if he wants to. Maybe going to go for the bash. Lana gets a double slithering crush. Actually, it's a triple slithering crush. And the Spirit, got to be careful, hasn't leveled up anything at the moment. It was a Spectre who got the bounty in the bottom lane. And Queen of Pain who got this top one. They couldn't fight it up. Another double slithering crush. Toon Tamer pretty low. He's pretty tanky, but not tanky enough. Gyrocopter gets the first blood onto Toon Tamer with those Rocket Barrage low res. With the plays, and we see Spectre must have got that rune with the, with the dagger. Batrider maybe not expecting that. We're going to see the Tusk move up to this top lane. Were we maybe we're going to have dual lanes? I don't know. Spectre already got these three magic stick charges. It definitely was the right decision. So we see a charge coming out from Toon Tamer onto this bottom rune. It's going to be an off lane Tusk. Actually, gets stunned up as well. Here comes the bait. This is a support slot that we're talking about. Trying to get the body blocks in. Can they bring him down? They do. Two kills for the dire side already. In this early part of the game, we're not even one minute in. And it will be an Ember Spirit facing up against the Queen of Pain. Not a favourable ma matchup for him. He started off with the PMS. Extra, extra block damage over just the Stout Shield. So that is helpful. And the extra damage because of the uh, 6 Agi you get. So he's pulling the creeps, using the aggro. To try and get himself a few last hits. And he's doing pretty well, actually. Queen of Pain is taking a fair bit of damage coming in from the creeps, I think it was. So, yeah, it's going to be a Dazzle... He's probably brought out some sentry, sentry wards, yeah. I'm going to try and deward this. Will be successful, but this means Batrider's already got the level 2. We'll have level 3 after this creep wave. Unless he's forced out. 
Sentry ward goes down. They're going to spot out this observer ward. That one, this shouldn't block the camp. Let's go move a task already low. This uh, dual in Bane Slaughter combo, very potent. And Bane's still only level one. So just had the brain sap. That means he must have caught up to the. This task must have been fairly out of position to kill him off that time. So this is a support Spirit Breaker, remember? Not going to be the best at zoning out the Bat Rider. They should, he should probably look to get a stick as soon as possible as well. The Bat Rider is up to uh, five last hits versus the nine of the Spectre. Going to chase after this Dazzle, who's pretty low. They get the charge onto him. They're going to throw out the heals as well, but the turn speed was too much. I'm not sure if the heals came in. Bat Rider now is going to fly over the top of everyone, throwing out those Napalm stacks. He's not worried about the right clicks for now. He does have a Ring of Protection, so he's up to five armor, but he's really only just whittled down the supports. And that's four Napalm stacks that was on Dazzle. Probably a good thing, yeah. Uh, Neither of the it could have been a dead dazzle for sure. This bottom lane tusks being zoned out so well, only 82 experience in this whole game. Charge coming in now from Toon Tamer onto the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain has the blink if she can't, wants to use it, doesn't use it in time. This is going to secure Ember Spirit, the, bat, the uh, rune actually. Doesn't have a bottle to do anything with it though. Queen of Pain maybe going to get bashed up, it is leveled up. Doom team has to be a little bit careful. Get the Searing Chains in. This might actually be enough. She has to blink. 50 hit points. So, but Spirit Breaker going to continue to go for this. Is it not a good choice when this Queen of Pain has been bottling up? TP coming in from one of the supports. Not in time. In fact, Dazzle's just going to TP himself out here. He had to do that. He must have had a bunch of Napalm stacks on him. In fact, he had four. So, this early game not going well for hot singles in your area. Plus, finally managed to get his boots, but he's still sitting at just that level one. Hasn't gained any experience in the last minute. And Queen of Pain nearly up to level six after being fed a kill. Whereas Ember Spirit, not even le close to level five, only level four and a half. So Queen of Pain will hit that level six much earlier and could look to kill off the Ember Spirit quite easily with the Sonic Wave if she has enough mana. And another charge coming onto this mid lane. The Queen of Pain is pretty low. Rune gonna try and be snagged off by the Slada. Not gonna happen as Ember Spirit moves away. Wants to go onto the Slada. Gets stunned up, but doesn't take uh, too much damage. This is only a le level two Slithering Crush Spirit Breaker. Taking some damage here, but neither Kaima or Arizona are gonna go down. So Dazzle does neck himself. And Invis Rune here. You're gonna look to stick around behind. Maybe get a Courier Snipe here or there. Slada takes control of the mid lane as the uh, Queen of Pain goes back from the charge onto this bot lane. It's the Bat Rider. He does have the Firefly up, but Spectre, he is slowing him down with the dagger. They're not going to chase for a risk of taking too much damage. But they do force Bat Rider back. He's now level four and a half. You compare this to the off lane Tusk, who is actually just forced to hide out in this little cubby hole just to try and get some experience. And that's very little experience he's getting. Queen of Pain, now level 6, could look to go in on this kill, just going to wait for the uh, Flame Shield to wear down, I think. And then going to go in for it, but I'm sure Ember Spirit is fully aware of what could happen to him. What are you going to do? Is he bottle crowing here? Oh yeah, he's just waiting for the, uh, the dagger to wear off. So he's going to bottle crow, send that back, and then bring his boots. Real, seeing if there's any stacks. Did get spotted out by the Radiant Ward. What is Baron Rider doing here? Maybe they're going to look to go on the Ember Spirit now. Queen of Pain does have the blink forward plus the Sonic Wave. There's no Flame Guard up. He could put it on now if he wants to do it. And he's going to have to do it quickly. Eat means he eats a lot of that damage. The Sonic Wave will come in, but they're going to turn on the Queen of Pain. And that's a kill. Ember Spirit managing to get that level 3 Flame Guard up just in time. However, Ember Spirit is going to go down to the Bat Rider. If he gets the right clicks in. Bash coming in from Toon Table. If he gets one Bash here, this should be enough to secure the kill. However, the move speed and attack speed slows too much. Bat Rider, is he going to get away? The Napalm Stack slowing down Toon Table for now, but he's got the charge. Zeriel is definitely out of here, all for the stun. Nearly stopping the Spirit Breaker getting that charge in, but nice try there. Inspector's going to move on forward. Batrider doesn't have this... I mean, Batrider, Climber, Slada doesn't have the uh, 
Stun up, but Bane does have the Nightmare. Gonna be forced to use it at some point, I think. Spirit Breaker gets the charge in. Doesn't see the Slava. The Slithering Crush is actually not gonna hit anyone. And there's the kills to go into the Spirit Breaker. The Sonic Wave ripping through two heroes. This is a Queen of Pain coming back to life after dying in the mid lane to their Ember Spirit. And now Spectre very low. Has to use the Phase Boots. Try and get to get through using the Spectral Dagger. He's gonna get denied, maybe? No. Queen of Pain blinking forward does get the kill in the end. But Ember Spirit now moving into the fray. Slava stunned up as well as the Ember Spirit. Gonna jump forward with the Ren to easily get himself that kill. And I think this is the end of the fight. This task has finally found some space for some levels. Gyrocopter now level 7. And yeah, at the end of that, that was uh, probably a 2 for 2 or so. Dazzle sitting in lane. Trying to get some experience where possible. Has to be careful though. This Batrider's level 6 chasing after the Dazzle. But with the Spectral Dagger coming in. Batrider, does he really want to go for this? He does. Grabbing hold of the Dazzle. Three Napalm stacks. Four Napalm stacks. Keeping him in the fire. However, the Grave comes out just in time. And Dazzle will survive through this. Slight uh, over judgment there coming from the Batrider. However, Spectre chased after by the Slardar though. And I actually think they can turn this around. And there comes the heal bomb. Spectre stunned up once again. But the Slardar chased after now by the Spirit Breaker. Going to try and get him in time before he goes underneath the tower. They're still going to dive this anyway. Toon Tamer should net get this easily enough with the last right click. Spirit Breaker now 2, 3, and 1. So he's been active throughout the map. That's for sure. And the same with the Spectre. I know he's uh, generally thought as a late game hero. But he got a fair bit of damage with the... Uh, the Spectral Dagger and got he's going for the max well maxing the Desolate over the Dispersion at least for the moment so that's extra damage coming away as well Ember Spirit he's 2 and 1 and this Queen of Pain is, is 3, 1 and 2 actually so but a couple of times now this Queen of Pain have looked, has looked for a kill on the Ember Spirit but with the max Flame Guard it's just not enough damage with the Scream of Pain look this soaks up at max level is at 500 magic damage the Sonic Wave, only 225, and if he gets the chains off here, ooh, he didn't want to throw it out. The odds were not in his favor, there's too many creeps around. This is where the Ember Spirit does, actually does absolutely fine. He's got the levels, got some decent CS actually, equal to the Queen of Pains. This top lane haven't really looked at that much, and we see the Gyrocopter go straight in for the drums. That's some uh, good stats, some extra move speed. Oh, that goodness. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So, this Batrider can now transition to the jungle if he wants to. Not going to do so. 900 gold. He's feeling fairly comfortable in this bottom lane, and Slardar is as well. He's now sapped. Level 5. And the, here comes Spe the Bat Rider, going to try and go off the Spectre. Spectre has the phase boost, trying to get away. Slada has the sprint though, the TP support coming in. There's the Tusk. Doesn't manage to grab the Spectre in the snowball though. Spectre will go down. Whether Tusk can find anything else or whether he will go down as well is yet to be seen. The TP support coming in from the Dazzle. Needs to get the Grave on the Tusk. It's not going to happen. The TP just took too long because of that second... Uh... He was a second hero coming in the charge, coming on, on to Climber. Spirit Breaker doesn't have this ultimate just yet. He's only level 4 looking for the bash. Not going to happen. And there's some extra TP support coming in for the Dire now. This is Gyrocopter. No mana for the cooldown, even with the power treads. Switched to intelligence. So, I was about to say the reading going to get away scot free, but it's not really going to happen. But we do see Ember Spirit get the Queen of Pain. Forgotten Fury getting on top of this Queen of Pain. Now three and one. I think three those three kills have actually been on the Queen of Pain. Actually, no, one of them was on someone else. And here comes the hasted Ember Spirit. He's going to go in here. Needs the Flame Guard. Going to get slowed down, but slows craps the Gyrocopter in the air. Slide of Fist coming through. Magic Shield. Hands burned down now. No Flame Guard for him. His Remnant moving so slowly because he doesn't have any move speed himself. But fine, Zeriel. He's going to get the kill there as well. In fact, it's a Dazzle with the Heal Bomb coming in. Ember Spirit bottling up where possible. It throws out his Spirit trying to catch out Josie. If he can do this, this will be really big. Gets the uh, uh, Searing Chains off. And that's another kill going the Ember Spirit. He's now dominating. 5-1 and 2. The Slardar would have to hide under his tower on two hit uh, on half hit points. But all heroes apart from this Tusk are in this bottom lane. Meaning Queen of Pain can push this mid lane, get some CS. Her score currently 3-2-2. Let's see if she can change that. 
Getting charged up at the moment with Ember Spirit coming in. He's level 10. He's got remnants that he can throw on forward. The blink comes in. Queen of Pain does move out in enough time. Slard, Spectre, got to be careful here. There's the extra move speed from the drums, plus the sprint. They're going to catch up to Spectre, but decide maybe to back off with the dazzle there. Spectre throws out Spectral Dagger. The Barrider, Barrider's, he's gone. Okay, no one's in this top lane. I need my Blink Dagger, so he's going to stick, stick around. Bean, doing some ancient stacks, but might cost him his life as Ember Spirit comes in, gets the Nightmare onto him, and they're gonna try and take off the Nightmare off of Ember Spirit. Maybe not the Sonic Wave come through! This is a double kill! It's not though! Ember Spirit getting away on barely 15 hit points. Now Spirit Breaker running himself away. As the Parent Haste, if he needs to use it, slow down. Now trying to use it, but I think the Sprint in Slada will be enough to catch up. Whether he... No, no deny coming through creeps. Even with the Hadouken just coming in a little bit late. Spectre forced to hide now underneath the tower. He's gone for the uh, gone for the urn. He can now go into Radiance if he wants because he's got some decent stats. He'll give him the survivability to avoid ganks. Top lane, Snowball going to come onto the Batrider. They've got these two heroes here now, including... Actually, it was only one. I think Spectre used that one to get in there. And thus, it gets the kill. They do take some damage. Ember Spirit. Finishes those BOTs. This means he can zip around the map. And he's got some serious levels. He's level to the bar. This is a 13 minute BOTs with an Aquila and uh, bring it again. PMS bottle. I feel like you should maybe have more. Is there something on the courier? No? Okay. So a very early medallion coming out for the Dazzle. It can be all very good in the top lane. Plus gets the Queen of Pain. Wow! Must have been a charge combo, yeah, the nether strike. I don't know, that came out earlier. Don't know how they managed to do that. And this mid tower being pressured now by Ember Spirit plus the Dazzle. Gyrocopter gonna move in. He's got the cooldown. He's gonna probably gonna be forced to use it. And uh, Bon Fury, he doesn't care. No flame guard just yet, but I'm guessing he's got a remnant back. In fact, he doesn't. This could be dangerous, and this tower probably will end up getting denied, actually. That's them. <laughs> Ember Spirit is going to move in, going to try and get the tower. He does. He's got to be careful though. There is the last suit. They're going to grab him. They do. There is going to be a grave coming out in a, a fairly soon. Don't even need it. Spirit Breaker charging onto uh, Ziriel now. From the top. They're going to, going to leave that as Ember Spirit gets himself an invisibility rune. Score is 13 for 11 and we're 14 minutes in. This has been one hell of a game so far. Plenty of kills, plenty of fighting. All that good stuff that we like to see, and now Gyrocopter being chased after by the Ember Spirit. Or the Invisible Spirit as it is now. He truly is transparent. Gyrocopter may be suspecting something, however, Queen of Pain, gotta be careful, the Ember's Rune comes out the charge. They're gonna wait just a little bit to go on him, but... Maybe she was sensing something funny up, or maybe the uh, Ember Spirit got sped its spot just straight a little too close to that tower. Man, look at these... Uh... Dial boards, really protecting them against these Spirit Breaker ganks. It's the Radiant themselves, they got them themselves some pretty aggressive wards themselves, and now the Searing Chains does latch onto the Batrider after the Slide of Fist. The charge comes through, hits on two here. Queen of Pain got that level two ultimate though, if she needs to use it, is gonna use it, hits on two, and Tamer gets that kill onto the Spirit Breaker, but the Batrider does eventually die. Ember Spirit remnants himself away, but Spectre's caught in a dangerous position, probably not gonna be able to get out of here. And we'll go down. It's not really a good trade, is it? Two for one. Double kill going the way of the Queen of Pain. Tusk, though, does have some room to push this top lane. Going to be going for that uh, mechanism, as we quite often see. Let's have a look at these graphs. A little bit early on, but the Radiant now 4k net worth ahead, which is quite significant. XP, not so violent, only 1500. TP support. This is going to be the Batrider. No lasso. Actually, he does have lasso. Got to look to get the Tusk. Tusk doesn't have the Snowball. Throws out the Ice Shards, punching up the Batrider. Not going to help, though, but the Ember Spirit coming in. BOT's on the Creep Wave. Means he does get the kill. Batrider does get the Tusk first, though. So at least that's some uh, experience. But still, no Blink Dagger just yet. You'd hope he would have it a little bit sooner. The Ember Spirit racking up this farm by getting another tower. 6, 1, and 3. Forgotten Fury getting out of control here. Bottom tower is under attack. Are fortified. 
Queen of Pain. Looking to draw. Looking for a little bit of a pull. Not not gonna happen. Not really needed as uh, we do have a little trade of towers. The top one did go down a little bit earlier, but the charge now coming onto the Slada. Chased after by the Ember Spirit. Has the regeneration rune. Trying to make as much use of it as possible. Is there gonna be a crush? Not in time. And Ember Spirit doesn't have the regen rune anymore. However, the TP coming in for the gyrocopter, the cooldown. Gonna miss the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit remnanting away the snowball onto low res. Punched up into the air and now Spectre's coming in. This is gonna be a double kill for God of Fury as he remnants in. No more remnants left though as the Bane goes down. It looks like a steamroller of four heroes at the moment. Where's the fifth? The fifth leading up the rear that is the Dazzle. The support. The cavalry from the back. Keeping his team alive. Is this mid tower. Looks in a, a dire state, and now a charge coming from Batrider. Gonna get stunned up in a double stun, and Batrider finished off very quickly there. Diving underneath the T3 tower to get it. Now the defensive weave. Doom Tamer's team doing some serious work at the moment. Ember Spirit, he's gonna have his Battle Fury uh, in probably you know before 20 minutes, which is not too bad. Not too bad at all, and the mechanism nearly complete for Tusk. I like that this Dazzle, he knows he's definitely position 5, not bothering to go for the Poison Touch this game. Might be worth it if uh, just, like the Batrider gets a Lincolns or something. Spectre. Actually, nearly got that relic. I mean, really what? She's top of the last hits. In terms of net worth, she's up there with the Ember Spirit. And this is the hero you don't generally see get top of the net worth until she's got the Radiance. But there we go. Relic can be bought up now with 3,900 gold in the bank. Radiance shouldn't be too far behind either. I mean, it really helps that she's got the Um, what was I going to say? It really helps that she's got the tower gold coming in for her. But five kills and eight assists will really help out, and you haven't died that too much. Nice double searing chains there with the slider fist. In your opinion, it's going to get herself a DD rune. It actually has the yules nearly finished. His searing chains up once again, although the Batrider blinking in. This is a new blink dagger. They need the fiend grip. Don't actually, they did use it, but it doesn't look like they really need it. And this is a huge kill to get actually 980 gold going the way of Bane. As that is huge. This blink dagger really paying off the Batrider. But that fight recap basically netted them a 60, uh, nearly a 600 gold XP change. So the Batrider basically, the blink basically paying for itself. But here comes the Spectre coming in, haunting in. Gonna try and find the Gyrocopter, the charge coming through. Hits on two. Queen of Pain already dead. And now the Nether Strike hitting on the Gyrocopter. And Batrider is gonna have to try and get itself out of here. Firefly up in two seconds. Is it gonna be enough time? Does do it, but three dead now. That was the Bane falling to the Spectre in this charge. Plus the Snowball. Batrider is a gone. That's four dead. Where is this Slada? Slada ran himself away very quickly and full on Radiance completed. Now for the Spectre and things are going to get a lot harder for the squishy heroes such as the Bane. And uh, Batrider doesn't really have that much HP at the moment. Sitting on just uh, Tranquils and the Blink Dagger. And now with Ember Spirit back in the fight they feel confident to move on forward. He's nearly finished that Battle Fury. If he didn't die, he would have it by 20 minutes. My prediction, about correct. Naked here, uh, Defensive Weave coming out, boosting the armor up of the rest of his team. And do they look to go for more? They could go Roshan with the Dazzle having this very, very early solo crest. Got a fair amount of physical damage. I think they could do this. They would have to be careful of the Batrider. Batrider is king of Roshan, or at least one of the top players. Slada does have his blink as well. They could really get turned around on the OTs on the Ember Spirit. You know, look to do something as oh, this is bait. 
Will it get taken though? Slala starts to take some bone damage and Spectre hiding out. They see the gyrocopter, the cooldown comes down. This is on the bottom side. At the moment, Spectre very low, doesn't have the haunt up. Is it going to be able to get out of here? Low res very low. Does finally go down though, but getting the kill on the Spectre is very important. But the Batrider dead as well. Searing chains come in, cell fuels. Does the Queen of Pain have the blink? Does have the blink just for now. Ember Spirit going up forward, the Queen of Pain. Oh, Slide of Fist went in the wrong direction. Is going to get charged after Blinker is not... Well, it is up. Isn't going to go off, though. So, easy, easy pickings there. They do lose the Spectre, but... He had his Radiance. Didn't lose too much gold. And his whole team definitely benefited from that fight. Slada, once again, the lone survivor. It's the Battle Fury. So the farm is really going to start racking up for uh, the Radiant. If it wasn't already, 11k net worth ahead. 10k XP. Oh dear. Dire. Not in a good place at the moment. Oh, the charge coming now onto the slaughter and the spirit did go back and a refill the bottle and then zip right back in this is a very aggressive spirit breaker but he's got the invis however it was used to get the charge on this turn team are very aggressive here now the cooldown gonna hit on him they're gonna get the lasso if they want to use it the grave does come out they don't even need the lasso looking for the uh, nice charge just <laughs> turn team are doing some pretty good job there and this is going to be the reinitiation. They've lost a fair bit of health on the die, and they're about to lose a whole lot more. Spectre haunts in. That's two kills already. Double kill for Nawe. And if they can find someone else, Slada back in the base. But the Slider Fist coming in onto that Bat Rider. He's dead. Queen of Pain as well. Actually makes it back to the base. Ice Shard's not going to connect, but T3 Tower now going down fairly quickly. Spectre still healthy. Everyone on the Radiant side healthy apart from the dead. Spirit Breaker. Obviously, death is not a healthy state to be in, but. Another defensive wave. It's gonna pretty much gonna completely counteract that amp damage shortly anyway. And GG's actually just called by Zirio. 30 for 17, the net worth disparity is just too much. But let's see what to deal with. So that's the first game, guys, as we see Toon Tamer's team dominate. Pretty damn strongly there against Zeriel's team. But it was a very entertaining game. Plenty of kills early on. It was just the Ember Spirit and Spectre. They just got free farm and by 20 minutes, well, by 15 minutes, they were already top of the net worth, which is where you don't really expect them to be. But uh, So yeah, the Bat Rider is not quite paying off in this game, I don't think. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please give me a follow on Twitch. I would really, really appreciate it if you did. Or on Twitter at Zambrello101. I'll be back for game two with my... Dan Bateman as my co-caster. But anyway, yeah. See you guys in a little bit. Don't you go anywhere.